Oh my God. Hello, good morning and welcome to the show with no name. I'm Theonia Rusianos and Hello um, oh, there, Palmer. How are you going? <laughs> and we have a habit of saying things wildly inappropriate or skirting on the edge of being inappropriate before we go live so that you always, always they are always bonkers. inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I say you all think we're completely Most bonkers than we are. <laughs> So it's been a crazy week. Now, we've got an awesome show for you today. I've actually been wanting to interview Rayanne for the last couple of weeks since we, since she was brought to our attention, but we had other things going on with the Rotary event and other interviews we had to get happening before then. So today couldn't have come soon enough for me. I'm really excited to hear her story, and you're going to love it. Now, the frame, I've, got the, I've chosen the one with the planets because what Rayanne and Jackie and their team are doing is completely out of this world. So I thought it was the most appropriate one to use. Before we get into that, can I just share a little bit about, because we've had on the show with no name, uh, firstly, for the people who are here new, welcome. And people who show up again and again, welcome back. It's really cool to see you and thank you for... Thank you for your support for the show with no name. The show with no name. Oh, I was Paula here. Hey, Paula. How are you doing? Going on? <laughs> and uh, I just have, see if I can see the comments. That's cool. I can see some comments here and the back dashboard here. So Paula said hi. I've said ticks. We'll talk, talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But the show with no name, Fiona and I dreamed this up because we wanted a way to help charities and not for profits and people who are doing amazing things in the communities to help communities uh, to, to build resilience, to develop and grow. And we wanted to give people a voice and a way to get out there to connect and net friend with more people and to be able to support their cause. So that's the, the, the reason for the show with no name. And the reason why it's called the show with no name was because we just started it and we didn't have a name with it and the name sort of stuck. So with Pretty the, much like everything else we do, it moved faster than we could keep up with it and yeah. then we just <laughs> And then it's like, well, okay, this is what we've got and somebody comes up with a great name, then we might change the, the name of the show, but at the moment it is the show. Kind of the we <laughs> did have a while. I just want to report back because we've had Mark Holden here. Be still mm. obese, you can't. Uh, we had... <laughs> There's a... If you want to know what the only story, you're going to have to go back about six weeks and watch one of those episodes where they reveal my childhood crush on Mark Holden while live on here with Mark Holden watching. Hashtag fangirl. Hashtag, totally hashtag fangirl. <laughs> um, but just to report that the we finished the events with Rotary and Romac, the Rotary, uh, Rotary Oceanic Medical Aid for Children, and they wound up with the final event in Port Lincoln last n night before last, on Tuesday night I think it was, and we made between all of the events uh, over $10,000 for uh, uh, Rotary and the Romac projects. Yay! And uh, it wouldn't have been possible without Mark Holden donating his time and talents, which was absolutely amazing. So gratitude, much gratitude to you, Mark. The Tea Tree Gully Rotary Club, um, I think we just really pulled the rabbit out of the hat with 6000 So we got, we actually raised $6,000 on that night, which was why we had a fundraising goal set at 5000 and we uh, smashed that by $1,000. So well done to everybody involved. I'm getting goosebumps because I love this everybody, stuff. And I love yeah, everybody involved and also everybody who donated. So we also interviewed Mark Lovett who donated a $5,000 piece of artwork, which, Beautiful. you know, without people like that and everybody who donated to the silent auction and all of that, without people like you, we can't make money. And, of course, the people who rocked up, people who bought tickets and attended because, there's, you know, you can spend and put, you know, spend all the time in the world and put the most amazing event together. If you don't have people showing up, you're not going to make any money. You're not going to raise money for the causes that matter. So thank you to everybody who was involved, whether you attended, bought raffle tickets, silent auction, put the event together. It, was, it wouldn't have been as successful as it was without any of you. And, and it's really created some great momentum. 
So if you are here watching, can you please invite your friends to join us because this is a community show and we're all about community and we would love to have people joining us live and we would also love you to share the broadcast so we can spread the good word far and wide, which is a beautiful segue into... It is, it is. So we have here today... The, now I've got Jackie is in the, in the lobby now as well. Um, I'll bring them both in in my message. So I'll bring them both in in a minute. But Jackie Opie is uh, I, Jackie o, Jackie and I have never met in real life. We've met virtually, but not in real you life. Are think, me? Oh my god! Okay, you, you just say you haven't met Jax in real life. Not, not in real. I feel like I've known her all my life, but no. Oh. Because it's That's a very Facebook and video and you just really do connect with people who do this stuff. She's absolutely amazing and I wanted to get your bio, Jackie, and I don't have it, but she does amazing stuff with the Love Revolution and you do need to connect with Jackie to find out what she's doing. But in this, uh, she's here with us today to talk about a project that her amazing husband is working on in Ghana which is also why we've got Rayanne here today. So I'll tell you a little bit about Rayanne's story and then Jackie can tell us a little bit more about herself because I know she's not shy on camera. Um, so <laughs> Rayanne moved to Ghana for a year with her husband in 2010 and everything she thought she knew about life was challenged. Her values changed and life as she knew it was turned on its head and she was pushed right out of a comfort zone. She wanted to do something to help and felt overwhelmed by it all. So uh, Rayanne and her husband decided to set up a not-for-profit organisation and focused on the most vulnerable, being the women and the children, and Aussie Ghana Relief was born. They began as a self-funded charity doing small projects until they had the hugely audacious idea of building the very first women's shelter in Ghana, which began in 2015. This is a very personal goal for them, as you will hear shortly. And fast forward eight years and they're here now, a registered not-for-profit with the ATO and they're very close to completing the shelter with just $22,000 needed to make it happen. Wow. So welcome, Jackie, and welcome, Rayanne. Thank you for joining us Thank on the you. show. Today. <laughs> Thank you. So happy to be here and so thankful for the opportunity to talk about our project. Hey, my beautiful. Hey, hey darling. Girl. Look at you. All right, Jess, we can see the top of your head. Just pop the camera down. Oh, That's no, the I can, no, no, no. I can see her perfectly on the dashboard. Oh, I see okay. Let me have yeah, I can see her perfectly. <laughs> let, let me have a look on my time TV, or like on the outside, because. Oh, oh, yeah. No, 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 no. I can see her perfectly on the dashboard. Listen, I can hear I myself can see now. Myself. Listen to Fiona because we're looking at your boobs if you listen to me. Nothing wrong with that. As perfect as each other. Absolutely. <laughs> now, if you're watching, please invite and share. Now, we've already got Paula Darch saying a great big fat wow, looking at what, uh, reading the bio on what Rayanne has, and her husband have set out to do. And yeah. that really is a great, yes, thank you, Paula. So, share. So, if you're thank watching, you. invite your friends to watch and share. Um, there's something amazing for you in this as well. So, for you as in you, the viewer. And so, Rayanne, let's start with Jackie because I didn't read out your bio. Do you want to tell everyone a little bit about how you and your husband got involved with the project? I would love to. Hey, Rayanne. Hello, my gorgeous. And hello, beautiful ladies. Hi, Adair. Hi, Fiona. Thanks for having me here. Hello. And isn't it amazing how things work out? I first met Rayanne. Uh, we were doing a Diploma of Positive Psychology together, and this magnificent woman sat next to me, and I swear I couldn't take my <laughs> eyes off of her. And every time you spoke, Rayanne, I was like, I need to know this woman. I need to connect with you. And during one of the breaks, Rayanne shared a little bit about uh, one of the challenges that they were having with getting um, some stuff to Ghana to do their project of building um, the first women's um, shelter in Ghana. And my heart was just exploded open and I could feel uh, the passion and I could feel the desire to really want to help and support women in, in the environment that they were in. And so at the time I said, you know, I connected Rayanne with a couple of people who I thought may be able to help. 
And it wasn't until a couple of weeks later when Rayanne mentioned that they were going back to Ghana to go and do some more work on the project. And I thought to myself, wow, this isn't a great opportunity for my son, Jared, to go and spend some time in Ghana and go and help. Um, And my son wasn't really interested, but my husband, Craig, who isn't on Facebook (laughs) and he's like, he's like a, um, he's sometimes I wonder if people think whether he actually exists because he's this amazing (laughs) man in my life (laughs) in the background. And he just, him and Shanton met Rayanne's partner and bromance. I swear it's a bromance. (laughs) I get jealous sometimes. I'm like, Craig will be Craig will be in bed at night on the phone and he's on the phone to Shanton. I'm like, this is a bit weird, guys. <laughs> but he's so beautiful. And the connection that they created was just so beautiful. And because Craig, my husband, has traveled to Africa before and he'd actually been to Ghana, mm. which is Shanton's hometown and where Rayanne spent a lot of time, Craig instantly said, yes, I'm in and Um, So together they went to go and do the project. And I think Craig got a lot more than he bargained for. He went over to help with the project, but he came back with a passion for supporting, um, supporting this project. And he sees Rayan, Craig sees your heart and he sees Shanton's heart. And, and that is the fuel behind this project is just the passion Mm. and the desire um, for people to, you know, do things that are different in their lives and to be able to have that courage and the confidence to step out of environments that are not best supporting them. And that's what this project Mm -hmm. is about. And it feels so amazing to be connected with it. Yeah. And for Craig having gone over there and seeing it for himself, I think it makes that connection more powerful and it helps you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it and just gives you that drive to move forward. Absolutely. Amazing. So, yeah, I did wonder whether Craig existed. <laughs> it does, I promise. Just ask my husband. <laughs> and that may well be true with Wayne as well. He's on Facebook. <laughs> Evidence. If they're not on Facebook, they don't exist, right? Exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> So we've got Glenn Mitchell, who is actually the president of Rotary that we were talking about earlier watching. So hi, Glenn, and hi, hi Dale. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Share yeah. and invite your friends to watch to hear what these amazing women are doing. So brings us to Rayanne. Like I said before, I've been, ever since Jackie shared a post a couple of weeks ago, I've wanted to speak to you, and the stars haven't aligned until today, and I'm glad they did. Me um, too. Yeah. <laughs> So share how, share the how, I mean, we heard your, you know, we, I read out earlier your bio, which is just crazy amazing. I'm just, yeah, exhausted reading that. <laughs> so how, setting up the not-for-profit, well, how did, how did it get started? Why, why, why this? Why the shelter or why the not-for-profit? Because there's actually two stories to that. So I'll start with the not-for-profit. Um, the, the not-for-profit, I got to Ghana in 2010 and I, I was 43 then and I thought I knew everything about, no, 44. I thought I knew everything about life. I thought I had my whole values and everything sorted and everything I thought I knew was just wrong in my opinion. I learnt to, um, I learnt how how grateful I should be for everything I had even though I thought I already was and everything I thought I knew was challenged and my buttons were pushed and I just said, I have to do something. I can't just live in this country and not give back somehow. And when I started to look for volunteering organisations, I found that I couldn't find one that I felt was reputable and all of them needed enormous amounts of money for you to even help. So we decided to change um, and, and, and start our own. And so I'm Aussie, he's Ghana, so he came up with the idea of Aussie Ghana being the name for our project and relief because we're offering some kind of relief. And so we started doing self-funded projects. So we did some, we've done heaps of things like feeding programs, orphanage visits, feeding the kids at orphanages. We put on a big Christmas party in 2010 with a bouncy castle and we got the kids haircuts and little presents. Like we've just, and we continued on like that. Then And then we started sending containers of, of donated goods when we moved back to Australia in 2011. 
2015, um, my husband was telling our neighbour his story. Now, I'll briefly digress and tell a little bit of his story because it's a really important part of this, this, why this all came about. At the age of 10, he he's not sure if he was 10 or 11, but basically his last image of his mum was her fleeing their family home wearing only what they call a wrapper, which is a bit like a sarong, which is what they wear when they get up in the morning because his dad chased her off with a machete. And she didn't come back for 11 years. And his dad only ever spent four weeks a year in Ghana because he was a trader. So after that, the, the sisters were farmed off to, um, to live with aunties. His older brother was old enough to look after himself and Shanton was kind of left to fend with for himself with whoever would look after him. And in a community, you can, at, a, at an 11-year-old, live on your own because there's always people around. So from that day forward, he had to feed himself, he had to educate himself. He used to go to school, no shoes, no uniform, no fees. He'd get beaten by the teachers, he'd be sent home. And he used to sneak into classrooms because all he wanted to do was learn. So he was telling this story to our neighbour who opened the very first women's shelter in Christie's Beach in the 70s. She's 87, she's amazing. And he, sat, he's, he never told his story to anyone but me. And he started to tell his story and she just turned to him and said, well, why the hell didn't your mum just go to a women's shelter? And he said, what's a women's shelter? And he'd never heard of that word before. Anyway, even in the midst of this story, he had to leave the room and come, and come back later. He said, I hope Helen doesn't think I'm rude, but I couldn't stop crying and I can't, I have to go back. So continued on and she told him what the concept of was a women's shelter. And he came in, he said, this is what I have to do. This is my legacy. This is, this is what I need to leave for my sisters in Ghana. And so since then, every penny he earns, and he's, he doesn't earn a lot of money. He spent over 50,000 of his own money to get to the point where we're at um, to build this shelter. 2006, beginning of 2016, I was running a workshop. I'm a mental health educator up in the Barossa. And these beautiful people, one woman was in the room, she came up to me in the break and she said, look, in October of 2016, my sister, our husbands and two of my children are going to Africa to volunteer, but we're having trouble finding out who's a good organisation, they're all really expensive, how do, we, how do we volunteer in Africa in a socially responsible way? I said, well, I found the same problem. All I can tell you is we're building a women's shelter. And she said, that's it, we're in. So they spent the next six or seven months fundraising, getting donations of goods, and they booked their tickets. And in October 2016, they came with us to Ghana to break ground and start construction. Do you want me to quickly tell a bit about the hiccup that met, that Jackie heard about, and then I'll tell you what happened since? Yeah, go for it. Sure. Sorry, it's a long story, but it's it, we've had so <laughs> many dramas, it's not funny. So when I met Jack, so... August 2016, we all stood there and clapped as our container of goods and love and donations were put uh, taken to the harbour. That was 25th of August. 31st of August 2016, our shipping company went bankrupt and our container was left stranded on the ocean um, with no idea of how we were going to get it to Ghana. And it got sent back to Singapore and... It took actually, uh, that was August, it actually took five months for us to get that container out. And in the meantime, it sat on the port at Singapore, which is one of the most expensive ports in the world to get your container from, incurring demarrage every day. So our $4,500 shipment became an 11, well, they wanted to charge me 14,352 to get it out, but I managed to negotiate down to 11,000. But before then I met Jackie and I'd literally just flown back from Ghana because we, our volunteers had all booked their flights. They couldn't cancel. And I said, well, the container's not going to be there. They said, we'll dig holes. We'll, we'll do what we can. We'll, we're coming, you know. I said, I'm not coming. I can't justify my airfare when we can't even get our container out. They paid for my ticket. So off we went and then I came back and I'd literally been back in Australia for about 36 hours when I sat at the table from Ghana, leaving my husband behind, risking his job to wait for this container and that's when I met Jackie. And from then we had this battle for, for months to get our container out. My husband had to come home because he nearly lost his job um, and then... We had dinner, met Craig, and then the boys went back. 
uh, for three months after our container landed, and that was April 2016. Wow, and they've been work husbands ever since. 17, <laughs> yes, yes. So now they're, yeah, so April 2017, they went for six weeks, and even then, we didn't have the money to do what they did. We had to borrow money to get the timber that, because Craig was there, and Shanton's ringing me, he's like, I have to do this. So we even took a loan to to get the, the money we needed for the timber because the seven the extra $7,000 that the container cost us set us way back. So yeah. we've been in catch-up mode ever since, but it doesn't stop him. Every penny goes over there. Every dollar's a brick. So we just keep going. Yeah. I Long story, that. but that's where we're at. <laughs> so it brings us yeah. to the next thing. We'll hear more about your story, but where time flies when you're having fun. We've got nine minutes to go, so I do want to talk about oh, your racket. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. Look, it's a, great, it's a great story. I wasn't cutting you off. I wasn't going to cut that short. Yes. I think it's important to hear the background. And like you said, every dollar is a brick. So, yes. you know, People, when it comes to donating to anything, if you think I can't donate anything, everyone can spare a dollar. Yes. So we had this great idea to have a raffle. And so thanks to Jackie, I've actually given a talk at One Rotary and they gave us $1,000, which was amazing. So we've been able to progress a little bit more. But we need 20000 to finish and we really want to have a date. We've got volunteers flying over and we want to be, we want to, in fact, we were going to do it in October, but we realised that we don't, we just cannot get that money. So I had this great idea. I'm going to host a raffle and everyone's going to flood me with, with the idea that they're going to want to win $4,000 first prize, seven fifty second second prize, two fifty third third prize. I was a little bit wrong. We haven't actually sold enough tickets to cover the prize yet. So I'm freaking out, which is why I said to Jackie, please, can you share my link? Um, so if we actually sold all the tickets that we had hoped to, we would have our $22,000. At the moment, we're halfway towards getting our first prize. So we're, I'm, I'm spamming everyone I know saying, do you want to win four grand? Because, hey, you know, we're not asking for money here. Like if people want to give a donation, thank you. But we're actually giving you the chance to win a prize. So we thought yeah. this would be amazing. I've learned a hard way that it's probably the most stressful thing I've ever done. It's been keeping me awake at night. Um, but I'm not going to give, we're not going to give up. My husband has a saying, he won't give up until his bones are rotting. So he won't even give up, give up when he's dead. <laughs> he's only going to give up when his bones are rotting. <laughs> <laughs> now, including you need to raise the twenty-two thousand dollars to complete the shelter. Plus, obviously, you've got the prize money that you need to raise. How many tickets do you need to sell? Another eight hundred and eighty. Okay. okay, and tickets are twenty-five. Yes. So twenty-five dollars for now. You're going to give the opportunity for this women's shelter to be built in Ghana. Yes. Yeah, but yeah. put that aside for a moment. I mean, that's the most important part of what you're doing here. But yeah. put that aside for a moment. Twenty-five dollars for your chance to win four thousand, and yeah, yeah. eight hundred more tickets to be sold. Those odds are pretty good. And if They're you're very in, good, if you're in the northern hemisphere, and you happen to buy a ticket in um, US currency, you could probably afford to buy two. <laughs> 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 so. Um, I don't know. Is there any rules around people buying? Uh, so, there are some rules, but we can get a bit creative. Um, they yep. need to be Australian, but I've got a friend from overseas who bought it and we just, because she is actually Aussie, but yep. we just gave her a local address. There are some funny rules around lottery. So Western Australia, Victorian people just will have to use a friend's address in South Australia. I didn't say that, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's just some weird rules with lotteries. It's just a strange, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot in the last few years, but lotteries, I just thought I'd be so inundated with sales, I wouldn't be able to keep up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. been it's been a lot more challenging than we expected. Um, but you know, you live and learn and you just hope that someday someone's going to go. I've had one friend, in fact, this very friend gave us $4,000 for the shelter. She bought 10 tickets and she's no. she's coming to, to volunteer. I'm naming a room after her in the shelter, though, because she's just been above and beyond. Yeah. All right. So, so and how would you help is simply buy a ticket. That's all we need to do. Yes. A, ten, a ticket or 10? Yes. <laughs> A promise of reward at the end. <laughs> and look, if people don't want, like I had a lovely lady on Friday night say to me, I just want to give, I don't want to buy a ticket. And she handed me $120. Yeah. 
So the, because we are now a fully tax deductible charity, if people want to give, um, we can give a receipt as well. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. So type tix, P-I-X, in the comment below and make sure you're commenting as yourself, not your page, because otherwise it won't work. Comment tick uh, okay. below to receive a message in your inbox with the details on how you can purchase tickets. Yeah. The link to the ticket. Ticketing link is also above. And, uh, I mean, $25 for, so how many tickets all up? The, if we sell them all, it's 1,000. Oh, 1,000 tickets. So at one the moment, in a thousand. A, yeah, as, at the moment, I mean, even if we got to 300, we'd still raise an extra couple of thousand mm -hmm. to, to, to buy a 1,000 more bricks. So, you know, it doesn't, the odds are really, really good for anyone at the well, moment. We'll, sure. we'll, 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 we'll buy our tickets. We'll be buying Thank a couple you. of tickets. So we will put it down. We'll click on the yeah, link. When, we'll, we'll when does the raffle close? Oh. At the moment, it's closing on the twelfth of September. But I'm actually trying mm. to beg with lotteries to let me extend it because yeah. if we don't sell that enough, we have to open our wallets to pay for the prize, which would be crazy. But we, yeah. if we sold them all by next week, or even if we sold up to three hundred by next week, oh. we're fine. Yeah. yeah. Here's Here's Annette. Hello, Annette. She is amazing. Keeps turning up. Annette's Hello. got a lovely group of amazing people to hang out with too. Good energy Lovely. about this. Annette, get your friends to buy tickets. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like just jumping into the kill. If you this story, please watch the green because it's a really amazing story from Rayanne and uh, a really beautiful bromance happening between Rayanne <laughs> And Jackie's partner that you find that it really is amazing the power of when you team up and collaborate and do things together that you know how how we can do so much more than just by yeah. going alone. So, so this year, oh, thank you, thank you, Annette, darling. Thank you. Collaboration, we just can't we can't stress enough. So I would not have seen, I wouldn't have heard about you had Jackie not have shared that post yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Yep. And yep. so, you know, if we don't share, people don't know. That's right. Share it. Even if for some who knows whatever reason you don't want to buy a ticket, you can't buy a ticket, whatever, share yep. because you don't know who can, who will. You know, people, women shelter, you know, to help build this women's shelter, they obviously need it over there. It's the only, we will be the first. Yes. In a country yeah. of 26 million people where domestic violence, about 40-something percent of women are victims. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's, mm. that's amazing, Rayanne. I'm yeah. getting to All you need to do is speak to somebody here who has been involved in a women's shelter yeah. to, uh, to see the, the work that they do and how important it is for these people to have somewhere to go when they're in these situations. Yeah, and the other thing I didn't think of, someone suggested to me the other day, so just in case you've got anyone listening, someone said to me, why don't you just get sponsors to provide the prizes? And I'm like, I never expected to be in a not-for-profit. My brain doesn't work like that. So if there is anyone that wants to sponsor, we'll happily yeah. take your money, put you on our website. Someone just build us a brand-new pro bono website, which is amazing, and we're going to have a sponsors page on there. So if oh, anyone yes. feels inclined to be a sponsor, we'll be, we'll be delighted. So, yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. So yeah. another thing, Ryan, before we wind it up, I'd just like to know, because I'd love to follow your journey. Now we've connected, and I think I was stalking yeah. you perhaps six or eight or even 12 months ago <laughs> and reached out and then you sort of disappeared into the ether and I haven't been able to find you again. So it's all about the timing. It's all yes, about, it you know, and, and I think if we connected back then, we probably wouldn't have had it, as much of the richness that we can bring to whatever yeah. we bring to the table as we do have now. But I would love to follow your journey and be involved in any right. way that I can personally as Thank well you. because the only and I also have the Women in Business Adelaide, which is uh, we've got a sort of a side business which is so totally should and we're setting up a like a department short store shop and we want an element of social enterprise with that um, as well as, yeah, there's a whole story that we can talk about offline but there may be some stuff that might be some spin-offs down the track from, you know, sort yeah, of where. Right. Because yeah. you so totally should support them. Where is it? I'm trying we, to actually have a so we actually have a social enterprise as well. 
yeah over yeah. there so yeah. so there could be some stuff that we could collaborate on right. there so we're all we're all about right. helping each other collaborating so uh Thank so you. we want i want to know how we can follow your journey do you are, yes. are you doing public through a, a facebook business page or a blog or yep so we we do have a well i've actually got nine business uh, nine facebook business pages because i'm a little bit i do many i'm multi-passionate but we do have an aussie ghana um website so it's aussiegana.com so aussie a-u-s-s-i-e-g-h-a-n-a.com and our facebook page is aussie ghana relief and okay. so we share um quite frequently on aussie ghana relief all right, so we'll put the link to Aussie Ghana Relief in yeah. the post above. And then what I'm going to suggest that people who watch this, who are here or watch the replay, pop over there, click on follow and then see first. So it comes up first in your news feed so we can Thank keep you. an eye on what's happening and and uh, keep in touch with Rayanne and the team that are doing some amazing things over there. Fabulous. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And if anyone, the other thing I do often do is do public talks. So if anyone wants a, a speaker to talk about, I've got like a, an average probably 20 minutes, half an hour I can do, I can cut it shorter, but I do a lot of public talks at Rotary, service clubs, public libraries, stuff like that. So I'm happy to well, give talks as well. Rotary for sure. So yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. So much sure. thank you so much gratitude thank you so much for saying yes when we ask because sometimes people get scared jumping on camera but when you're doing oh, what you're never. doing you can't <laughs> <laughs> you're friends with jackie you can't be shy <laughs> no that's right <laughs> thank you so much i'm really really grateful no thank you and we've lost jack she's just popped out so popped Sorry. out so thank you both thank you to rayanne and jack for jumping on today and sharing i mean that is absolutely amazing we've all yeah i'm mind blown <laughs> just amazing stuff it's amazing to see what people in the community are doing and it's our global community as well you know yeah. so what what we do it impacts the lives of people within our local community but also in our global community and i think that's just as important it is and it comes every every story that we have heard comes down to the same thing an idea starts with one person so never think i'm only one person what can i do what kind of difference can i make i can't make an impact clearly you can you can't do it on your own it does it takes a village it truly does take a village to get anything off the ground and moving and happening hashtag. and hashtag and hashtag yeah. <laughs> and sponsors. It takes sponsors. If you are in a position where you can offer some sponsorship, <laughs> so if you're in a position where you can offer sponsorship, hashtag you so totally should get in touch with Rayanne. Hashtag so tosh. Get in touch with Rayanne. So get in touch with Rayanne. If you know somebody who uh, even if you're not someone in a position to give up some sponsorship, if you know somebody who could sponsor them, you know a business or, you know, quite often it's people who have been involved with, in, in, in this specific example, someone who's been involved has had to use a women's shelter before or perhaps someone who's been over to Ghana and is just touched by, you know, what they're dealing with over there. Get in touch with Rayanne and, you know, even if you can't offer up $4,000, you know, a few people giving up five hundred dollars will help and go a long, 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 long way. So get in touch. Brilliant! What a and show! My God, we have got some amazing people in our community. Oh, Annette, thank you, darling. Yeah. Is that the name <laughs> of our show? Soul Sisters, Adair and Theoni. <laughs> we'll have to think about that. We've got yeah. another live to do very, very shortly, so we do yeah. have to go. Oh, Annette, thank you. Our energies are huge. We just, yeah, it's doing what you love, isn't it? It's, it is. It is. And it's not work when you love doing it and you're having fun. It's just we're just having fun because, you know, we like to talk. <laughs> and we like to talk with amazing people, people like Rayanne. So we, we have run over time. We do have to go. Thank you for joining us on the show with no name yet with the Soul <laughs> Sisters. <laughs> the Soul the Sisters. Going off the end. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, okay. oh. And that's and there, in, this, in this spaced out environment, have you still got the screen frame? I have. 
I have because what they're doing is completely out of this world. So I was like, that just out of this world. So we've got the we've got the space theme happening today. Thank you everybody <laughs> for joining us, and we will see you next Thursday at nine thirty a.m. for the show with no name yet. <laughs> remember, type ticks to receive an inbox with details on how you can get a ticket to this raffle for your chance to win four thousand dollars and support. Uh, the women's shelter to help this women's shelter to be finished. They need $22,000 to finish the shelter being built. Uh, so, yeah, dig deep, $25, $25 and you've got a chance at winning four grand yourself. So on that note, we'll see you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>